By the events of Mass Effect 1, 50,000 years have passed since the mysterious disappearance of the ancient Prothean race, the civilization believed by modern galactic society to be responsible for the construction of the Citadel and mass relay system. However, we later come to learn that these beliefs are false. The truth was much more sinister, and it cost the Protheans their lives, as it had for many civilizations before them. The architects of their doom were the Reapers. But what are the Reapers? A question hopefully this Mass Effect lore video will answer. The Reapers are an ancient, synthetic, organic race of highly advanced starships. These starships each have a consciousness comprised of billions of organic minds. Their purpose? Hibernate in dark space for roughly 50,000 years before returning to cleanse the galaxy of advanced spacefaring intelligent life, harvesting the civilizations to make more Reapers to continue the cycle, which they've been doing for roughly just shy of 1 billion years. The true names of these old machines is unknown, as the name Reaper was bestowed upon them by the Protheans to give voice to their destruction. However, whatever they're actually called is irrelevant, if they even have a name of their own at all. They simply are. Physically, you could liken their appearance to a cuttlefish or a squid, except colossal and metallic, and they're flying through space, among other things. This standardised design is based on the Leviathans, a massive ancient aquatic race of which the Reapers share many visual similarities to. They also have a similar ability, though we'll get to that in a moment. There are some variables between Reapers, with smaller examples being a few hundred metres long, to larger examples being a few kilometres long. Of course, this varies depending on the purpose of the Reaper, as presumably some are more powerful than others. Other variables include the amount of eyes and legs. These things may vary depending on the speed species that was harvested to make said Reaper. Though all Reapers are made in the general image of the Leviathans, as that design is most efficient for their purpose. The core of these Reapers are however built in the image of the species that was harvested to build them. There are several different subtypes of Reapers. Destroyers are only 160 meters tall, but they're formidably powerful as their name suggests their main purpose is destruction, being equipped with a main gun that could obliterate a cruiser in seconds. They tend to function as escorts for capital ships, being able to destroy the smaller targets such as frigates, and can utilize their legs to walk on land becoming heavy walkers making them efficient in engaging ground forces too. Troop transporters can vary between 200 meters and a kilometer in length and can be used to transport husks, which are essentially synthetic organic zombies that have been created from the bodies of organic beings. These transporters can also be used to bring victims to Reaper processing units, and these processes are another subclass of Reaper that is a mobile center for mass DNA harvesting. Troop transporters and processors lack sentience, being remotely controlled by other Reapers. Sovereign class capital ships are 2 kilometers in length, and their main weapon is a spinal mounted cannon with a yield of up to 450 kilotons of TNT, and no known ship has been known to survive a hit from this weapon. Capital ships also find themselves armed with multiple cannons besides their main weapon that are also capable of just as easily destroying opposing vessels. They can also deploy Oculus drones to handle fighters. The only other known class of Reaper is the Harbinger class, which appears to be completely unique to the first Reaper ever created, Harbinger. Harbinger is identified as the largest Reaper in the Armada, and visually differs from the capital ship class, though it's not known if it's any more powerful. Even if they came across as somewhat bog-standard spacecraft, their technology puts them far above and beyond, with a couple of terrifying abilities, such as the power to exert influence on organic beings, mentally manipulating them in a process known as indoctrination nation in which any organic being who is exposed to Reaper technology over prolonged periods of time will come to believe the Reapers to be correct in their goals, and will do anything to serve them. Indoctrination is gradual, and the mind slowly erodes to the point where eventually an exposed organic being will become a mindless slave, no longer capable of independent thought. Reapers can manually control the rate at which this process occurs. Often, they allow the subject to believe that they are acting of their own convictions, with individuals deemed useful by the Reapers given just enough free will to still be capable of their tasks, as the more control the Reapers exert through this process, the less capable the subject becomes. The effects of Reaper indoctrination is permanent and irreversible. By the time it's even detectable in organic beings, it's already too late. This is also one of the Reapers' most dangerous abilities, as the indoctrination of just a handful of influential individuals can deliver entire civilizations to the mercy of the Reaper's harvest. Even exposure to Reaper technology that's been completely inactive for millions of years can lead to indoctrination, and 
so in any form of interaction between Reaper technology and organic individuals, this poses a real risk. Indoctrinated individuals can be made aware of their indoctrination, however, and can attempt to resist the Reapers, though this is painful for the individual and the indoctrination will win out. However, this does give the subject enough time to utilise their free will to take their own life and end their usefulness on the spot. It also appears to be apparent that the rate at which Reaper indoctrination takes a hold of a victim also varies depending on the willpower of that victim, and it would also appear as if not all indoctrination attempts are successful. Reaper indoctrination isn't too dissimilar to Leviathan enthrallment, in which Leviathans are able to exert control over organic species through their many artifacts scattered across the galaxy though Leviathan enthrallment appears to be much more direct. Furthermore, enthrallment causes no long-term mental damage, besides from the victims having no recollection of being under the influence of a Leviathan. That was a very crude explanation of Reaper indoctrination, there's of course a lot more detail to it than that, though I feel like the opportunity to explain it in depth is worthy of a video of its own at a later date. The Reapers can also create husks by impaling organic creatures on spikes. Over time, these bodies, organs, skin and water content are converted into cyber genetic materials, converting people into effectively zombies. These husks may take different forms depending on the species that's used to create them, but they're all used by the Reapers on the battlefield as ground forces. Reapers can also utilise highly advanced computer viruses to sway synthetic species such as the Geth to join them in their conquest against organic civilizations. Another tool in the Reapers arsenal is the Mass Relay Network and Citadel itself, which serves a significant function in their harvest. The mass relays function as a network for spacefaring organic civilizations to utilize as a means to travel across the stars, which means that those civilizations will only travel across the pathways left behind by the Reapers. And due to the usefulness of this shortcut, these civilizations won't put too much thought into finding another means to traverse the galaxy. And no matter how you find yourself traveling across the mass relay network, you will always find yourself at the Citadel eventually, making it seem like the ideal place for governing bodies to use as something of a capital. But the station is actually an inactive mass relay that leads straight to dark space, and once activated by a vanguard, in Mass Effect 1's case Sovereign, the Reapers can arrive through it and instantly wipe out the central governing body of the galaxy, and along with them any hopes of surviving a galactic genocide. Meaning that the Citadel and Mass Relay Network are actually an elaborate trap, and time and time again galactic civilizations have utilised these technological feats for their convenience, unknowingly enabling the Reapers to wipe them out swiftly and precisely, and then find any notable strongholds throughout the galaxy. Now how did the Reapers come to exist and why? To understand that we need to understand a little about the time of the Leviathans. To exercise their will effectively, Leviathans often used thrall species to achieve their objectives. This allowed them to spread across the galaxy despite their immense size and aquatic nature. As they enthralled every race they came across, they came to see themselves as the galaxy's apex species. They noticed that their thralls would frequently build synthetic constructs to aid them, and those synthetics would constantly rebel. Many of the Leviathan's thrall species as a result were wiped out. In response to this, the Leviathans created an artificial intelligence and tasked it with preserving life at all costs, and that's what the intelligence did. Concluding that the Leviathans were also a part of this problem, the intelligence began to act on its mandate, creating an army of pawns to collect genetic data from species throughout the galaxy not too dissimilar to the collectors, turning against the Leviathans and using the genetic material to create Harbinger, the very first Reaper. The intelligence then used Harbinger to begin this cycle of harvest, using the species of the galaxy to create more and more Reapers, technically preserving life in the form of the Reapers. Approximately 1 billion years later, this cycle is still going on in the Mass Effect trilogy, and we can blame it all on the hubris of a civilization of space squids. Hopefully that explains a bit more about what the Reapers are, but that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff, that would be super fantastic. Be sure to check out my Twitch channel via a link in the description if you're interested in watching me play through the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, but if not, no worries at all, it's just there if you want to check it out, and it's quite a chill place and we can have some good conversations. And with any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point, but until next time, take care and goodbye.